All right, guys, Fiona's back up on the lift, and I figured I'd give you guys a couple of basic videos. Um, nothing too crazy. I need to do the right rear window regulator, so we'll go through uh, removing the door panel and uh, doing the regulator itself. And then I also need to do the left rear door lock actuator, and I'll show you that also. Uh, probably two separate videos, but, uh, you know, let me, uh, we'll start with the basics here. A um, couple things you got to do to get the panel off. There's no real screws in the in the exterior of the panel. You do have the door handle screw. You have an upper screw here. These are pretty beefy little screws. So then you got one down here. You take these out, and then uh, what you do is we'll use a flathead screwdriver. I actually have uh, a couple of uh, the plastic. Uh, panel tools and uh, in here is those clips those white little plastic clips every couple of inches or so and you basically just work your way around the panel um, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and and, uh, and show you how I do this but uh, a lot of the times I don't even uh, don't even need the other thing I find the spot where I can get my screwdriver in and I just kind of work it out I also slide the screwdriver down until I feel a clip, like I just hit a clip. That'll give me a little more leverage, and then I give it a pop. Once I do that, I really don't need anything else anymore. I just kind of grab the panel, slide over to the where I feel the next clip, and give it a give it a pull. And you can see it's just working its way out all the way around. And I do that over on this side too. A little hard with one hand on the camera, so you know. We'll do that. Right now I'm going to go ahead and get the Phillips head and uh, and I'll take those screws out and the door handle. One thing I wanted to show you here on the inside door handle, once I pop that little screw out, um, go ahead and pop the handle out. It kind of It kind of moves backwards because it locks in, but you'll notice that if you look behind there, the um, the little yellow plastic piece over there that connects to the open rod that goes all the way over to the uh, to the lock over here to the to the door latch. What I do when I when I do these is I leave them on the rod just like this. I pop the door panel off the hinge. I mean off the uh, uh, rivets that are holding it on, and I just kind of slide that door handle through this opening. It'll work. You just kind of kind of you know you fucking fumble fuck around with it for a minute and it goes right through that hole on a kind of an angle and this way you don't have to dick around with trying to trying to get this out of there the fronts give you a little more room the rear the rod is on the inside on the front you can get it with a needle nose plier the rear is just a ball buster anyway i'm gonna pull the pull the door and continue on so this is what i meant i kind of pop the door up and uh the door panel up and off it's off up top up here it's just kind of dangling in the breeze and then i just kind of get that going through there and out she goes i leave it dangling now you got a couple of things here there's no back door courtesy lights but there is there is this little doodad here that goes for the window sh uh, switch you see the little button in the middle here i push that with either a flathead screwdriver or i use a straight pick just push it I actually push up on the connector so that I'm seating it more, push in, and then pull down. I find I have more success and less breakage that way. But anyway, I'll go ahead and do that off camera because I need both my hands. Once I, uh, once I come back, I'll have the panel off and I'll show you what's what. So I got the panel off and you can see Fiona's door, her, her guts have been unmolested. You can tell that by this is OE, this is original. Um, it's possible somebody peeled it back and put it back into the factory position, but I doubt it. Um, normally I come through here and I cut the fucking shit up. I'll either, I'll either use packing tape to put it back, but um, what we're shooting for here, um, we're shooting for 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter, and this guy right here, I don't uh, take him all the way out. Still a 10 millimeter. I loosen it up. It lets the motor dangle. Here's your motor wiring right here. Okay, there's your connector right there. So what I'll do is I'll disconnect it here. 
and I'll just leave it dangling in there. One thing you have to do here, and I have a broken window regulator, is this up here on the glass, probably right about where my fingers are, is what's mounting the regulator to the window glass. So in order to get access to it, you need to lower the window. If you have a broken window, that can be a pain in the ass. Uh, if you have a broken window regulator, sometimes I'll cut the cable. I assess each situation depending on what's what. Now, I pulled the regulator at the pull yard, and I've done this enough to know that I brought my little uh, NOCO jump box. So when I'm at the junkyard, I just cut the wire right here, and I'm looking at a good window regulator, and then I just hook my jump box up, and I hear the motor running up or down. Depending on which way it's running, I switch the leads, and I bring the window down at the junkyard under power till I can get those so I don't fuck anything up. Trying to get them way up here is it's a task of futility, so you're wasting your fucking time. Uh, I do hundreds and hundreds of windows. Uh, you can tell, you know, like any car I buy, I nine times out of ten, I got to do a window regulator. Most of the cars, the windows have to come out now. All that said, I'm going to go ahead and figure out my plan of attack on getting this down, and I'll show you where we're at on the next step. Like I said, I went to the pool yard the other day, and uh, you can see I put the, the window switch in. It's actually not the window switch from Fiona. Hers is still there. I got a full set. I, I, um, I, I bought two rears passenger front and a master window switch i also bought all four uh inside door handles um i bought the door lock actuator the window regulator i actually have um a left rear and a right rear window regulator on my shelf in the shed i bought another one um the one i had in the shelf was motorless so i may take the motor off of here and then i always have a spare the front window regulators are different than the rear so don't be fooled and think the door handles aren't, you know, you can move the rear door handle on that same side up, but you can't do that with the window regulators. The right rear and the left rear are different, and the right front and the left front are different, okay, as is the door lock actuators. Door lock actuators over here, I'll show you, I've already got the panel off on the other side, um, I'll show you in the next video the left rear uh, door lock actuator. And uh, door lock actuator, for those of you who don't know, that's when you hit the remote control, it makes the doors unlock or lock and sets the alarm system. So they all go in, in tandem. Three of them work. That one's a limp dick over there. Anyway, uh, I'll, uh, I've got the window switch in my spare. I've got the key on accessory position, and I want to lower it down and see what's what, see if I can get it to, to get where I need it to. It's actually running pretty good, huh? I'm gonna make sure this thing's not too crazy messed up. Yeah, there it is. You see it on the up? That's our issue. Um, I don't know if you can see the, the 10 millimeter right there, but um, basically what I gotta do is um, I gotta get this to come back up so that I can uh, get to that 10 millimeter on that side and then one will appear over here or through this hole on this side and we'll get to those. I'm gonna do that right now. I just used my hand while I, uh, while I uh, pulled on the up switch, window switch, and got it up there. And you can see how the, how the regulator is attached now to the glass on both sides. And uh, you see the 10 millimeter through that access port and the other one there. So when I remove those, I'll be able to leave the clips on the window and take the glass up off the regulator. I kind of do that as the last step. You can see I cut a horseshoe out of the plastic and folded it back. Um, what I'm going to do is lo loosen, including those, I'll remove those, but then I'll loosen all the other tens, and we'll go from there, and I'll pick you up and show you where I'm at next step. All right, just a little look-see. Uh, you can see I left that, uh, that one on there. It's loose so that I can... The motor still hangs. You can do the same thing up here on the top uh, top side, but the regulator is still held in by the by the window, so I kind of find that pointless. What I do now is uh, I've already disconnected the power to the motor right here, and you can tell again. You push up a little bit, stick your finger on here or a hook, 
um, and you just push in and pull down. I like to push up because it frees that, that little locking clip and then I push in and down. Uh, it seemed to work real nice. Next step will be to, to, to actually take the glass off and you can see looking at the screw it's moved. If I just put my fingers under here and lift up, oh, lo and behold there's the glass. Now I don't remove the glass from the vehicle like I do on some of my cars. I just lift it up out of the way, I hold it, and now I'll pull the regulator out, the motor out, and I'll drop them, and then I'll let the glass down. It's really not in your way on this situation. And these regulators, they come out kind of the opposite side. If the motor's on the left, like this one is, looking at it, it it'll come out this right hole over here. So the motor's there, but it'll come out here. And it kind of comes out, regulator motor, all in one little shebang. So I'll kind of... I'll kind of show you what's up next uh, once I go ahead and, uh, and start to move it. This might give you a better idea what I'm talking about. Still got my hand on the glass. I actually have suction cups and, uh, and uh, it's like a special tool. There's two of them and you put the suction cup on this side, flop it over to the other side, put a suction cup and it holds the glass up. Uh, Mac makes them, a couple of people make them. But anyway, here's where I've, I've come to. The motor I've dropped down and the regulator is on that angle. So now you can see what I'm talking about. The whole regulator motor assembly will come out in one piece, all connected, right out this hole where I'm pointing at right now. And that's my very next step. One quick thing I forgot uh, to mention that I'll bring you up on. When I did disconnect the motor, you see that little, that little clip? That's where the motor lead uh, from the switch connects to the motor itself you actually have to disconnect that and I just use a flat blade screwdriver and pop it out um, I'm sitting here going what the hell's holding the motor and the wiring that goes from that clip goes to the motor so you can't get this thing out until you pop that clip off uh, just an FYI even I've done so many even I forgot anyway uh, next step the regulators out all right, you can see motor and regulator are out. They're on the bench over there. Um, I dropped the window down and let it sit. It's all the way down up here. So it's not, not going to go anywhere and crash, break, or anything like that. What I need to do on this one is a little bit of bench testing. So the problem with this one is it, it was the up. So uh, I'm not sure. I don't want to take this motor off of here yet and put it on a... Um, the other regulator that has no motor and this motor's the issue. So I'll probably uh, dick around with this for a few minutes. One thing I wanted to show you um, is whenever I do take a regulator, matter of fact, let me just show you. Whenever I do take a regulator from the, from the junkyard, um, I'll always pull it with the motor and I'll always pull it with the vehicle side of the of the harness so i don't have to cut anything to test it or dick around i've got two flying leads right here i can, can connect over to my battery i don't know if you can see it across the way on the table but i keep a battery with uh test leads on it so i can always just jump something out easy um they've got alligator clips so this is the regulator i pulled the other day these are the two i've had in stock forever uh since i got shrek um, but basically what I'll do is I'll just pop this bad boy off of here and I'll move it over to the one outside and uh, I'll bring my battery out and test it. Um, this way I know, hey, um, I'm, it's, it's the cable or hey, uh, we got bigger fish to fry and it's the motor. Then I'll just put that regulator in and uh, work on rebuilding the other one or just getting a motor for it so that I have one good rear working regulator for each side. So guys, I figured I'll take you through the whole thing. Um, I went ahead and hooked it up to my uh, to my battery, and when I started to run it, it runs really super duper slow in each direction. So I'm kind of starting to think it's the motor, since the regulator itself doesn't look too bad, like there's no broken wires or wraparounds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the motor from the regulator, and that's done by these, um, this, this, and this. Uh, Phillips head. Um, I, I like to use the beefier uh, Phillips tip on those so I don't strip them. Um, they're usually Loctited or hard as shit. And once you get them going, bam. 
once you break them loose they're easy but I'm gonna pop the motor off and then I'm gonna run the motor separately and if the motor's sluggish and I can run the regulator this part up and down by hand then I'm gonna shit can the motor and keep the regulator um, and then find a motor for it down the line but uh, I'll show you that next I'll give you the quick skinny on what's going on once I pull the motor well it's kind of fucking rusted up over there which me makes me believe that inside the gear set is all rusty whatever's metal in there uh, the uh, spindle so there's where it mates um, you can buy these regulators with or without a motor but just understand that the motor goes into that little um, whatever you want to call it triangly slot uh, and that's what drives the regulator up and down all right next step I'm gonna power up the motor so I, I just have to release this this clip here Technically, I don't have to do that either, but uh, I just want to see how the how the motor is going to run. So that's hooked up to my test battery. Uh, it's fully charged too. It's like 400, 500 cold cranking amps from a Nissan or a Honda Civic, I forget. But anyway, um, you can see how slow that's turning. Uh, unacceptable. So it is the motor. Um, if I come over to the regulator and I and I want to go ahead and move this. You can see it's, um, I'm just one-handing it right now, and it's basically just moving free, and you can see the regulator gear is turning. So it's uh, definitely not the regulator. I'm going uh, to change direction on, these, uh, on the wires and let you guys watch it spin the other way so you know what I'm talking about. And again, you can see it's going the opposite direction, but slow as balls. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring that new regulator out and go from there. All right, guys, so this is the regulator I purchased uh, yesterday. I pulled it. Um, you can see they marked it Coco Auto Salvage. Um, I put my, uh, my pigtail back in, the one I take when I, when I took it. Um, and I'll just show you how it should run um, with no load on it. Uh, just the regulator. I'm still hooked up, but once I hook this up to here That's how a good working regulator should work about that speed When it gets to the top it'll deadhead so I disconnect my I disconnect one of my power leads uh, And then if you reverse the leads it will run in the opposite direction and, and It'll deadhead at the other end so I disconnect my leads um, with all that said I'm gonna go ahead and put this one in um, I've got this one over here I've, I disconnected this little uh, connector piece for the motor and I took my pigtail leads off a lot of times before I throw anything out I will keep this side um, I don't know I have a whole box of them I have the troopers separated too into their own pile of shit um, this way I can test everything if I'm messing around with these things and I'm keeping these vehicles I want to be able to test them just as simply as I I did that I got a battery already I've got the flying leads this is a flying lead by the way uh, just a, a piece of wire that doesn't terminate anywhere called a flying lead anyhow um, I can I can check this shit out I can fuck with it dingleberry around you know how I do um, just a quick, you got everything in stock, you're ready to rock and roll, fuck it, I'm going to put this one in, that one I'll fix later. Maybe I'll, you know, look around, see what kind of motors I got, take it on the ride, buy one on eBay. All I really need is that motor, Cardone rebuilds them, they're fucking boatloads, so, you know, I think I paid 20 bucks for this, um, 20 or 30 bucks used, um, and to me, like I said, I like to have them one of everything around so I don't have any issues uh, next step will be me the reverse putting the uh, regulator back in so before I put it in on top of everything else you'll notice this is the regulator I took yesterday um, if you take a good look at the picture I'm showing you I, I take all the bolts the, there's the regulator mounting bolts and there's the motor mounting bolts can't tell you these this is the most popular size uh, it's a 10 millimeter head um, the thread is probably a 6 by 1.25, something like that, and it's like everywhere. You can use this thing in any 
car any so i have tons of these bolts i take them all the time um in all different lengths and whenever i need something for a door handle for even one of my other vehicles i've got it um you know you're going to have them in the vehicle you have but if somebody's been in there and fucked around with it it's better to have everything same thing with door handles any part i remove i take the flying lead portion that goes to the vehicle harness and then I take any of the screws that mount it or bolt it. They don't charge you for that shit, so you might as well take it, have it. You get there, you open the door up, and some dick has put, you know, uh, a fucking cotter pin in there or something and jerked it off. Um, you know, the best thing to do would be to have the right shit so that you can go, oh, you know, I got these right here. Let me, let me do it, like, the right way, okay? Anyway, I just wanted to show you that. I've got my, um, this time on the way back in, I've got my uh, one bolt here, one uh, machine screw in but loose, and I got this upper left, this is the top uh, left, in and loose. Um, both of those are going to go through the keyhole slots, and uh, kind of makes your life a lot easier. So basically, pardon the camera guys, I'm working one handed, but um, so next step would be just to kind of. Um, I'll kind of uh, lift up the window glass and get it out of my way. And I got to, you know, this is one-handed. Um, matter of fact, uh, hold on one second. I'll, uh, I'll show you what I got. I'm giving you guys the full court press today. These are what I was telling you about, uh, Maco window holders. Um, it's a double suction cup with the aircraft steel cable on it. Um, you can see in the little picture here what you do with it. Um, it's for one. Let me try and get it to focus. There you go. It's for one-handed windows, and uh, you know it makes working alone, you know, a little bit easier. I'll show you those installed in a minute. Well, there you go. That uh, just kind of give you an idea of what you're up against. Uh, I guess that's why they got the saying, you know, the right tool for the job. So that just holds the window up out of your way. You don't have to shove wood in there or scratch your tint or whatever. And uh, it uh, frees up the, uh, the area that the regulator has to go through without you having to fuck around. Uh, next step is me shoving the regulator in, which is basically the reverse of taking it out. All right, there you go. Um, hanging from the keyhole here, upper left, and the keyhole here, motor upper. Um, then what you do, what I'll do is I'll just line these up, get them all going in, get them all tightened up. Then I will lower the regulator down to the bottom access area again and hook the 10 millimeters back up uh, for the window, to the glass itself. And I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, don't forget to route your, your wire through when you connect to your motor. And also don't, connect, don't forget to connect this back up here. Um, like uh, it just pops in so that it's out of the way and it doesn't get ripped off when the window goes up and down. All right, next step, show you it. Uh, um, getting closer to finished. All right, guys, so as you can see, I took off the uh, window holders. I brought the regulator back down to where we had it earlier. Um, I like to get the plastic out of my way. I put my uh, spare uh, window switch in. I lower the regulator down. Then I lower the window down manually, and I get it close to lined up. Now you're going to put your... Uh, by the way, every, every one of these uh, M6s are all the same length. Um, but you have to be careful with that. Sometimes they're not in different vehicles. Um, I think there's eight, uh, there's two, four, that's a seven, nine in here, and they're all the same size. So what I'll usually do is I'll, I'll start these in there by hand, and then I cinch them up. You know, I use the, uh, the impact. I, I don't blast the shit out of everything. No, I just give it till it ticks a couple of times, and uh, that's tight enough. Um, next step will be... Uh, putting the plastic back down and putting the panel back in. Um, I should have some things to say because I'm fucking long-winded. But anyway, uh, hopefully this is helping and not hurting you guys. All right, window bolts are uh, cinched back up. Um, I like to run it a couple of times to make sure everything's good. Um, just to uh, make sure it's seating right and not hitting anything before I put the panel back on. All right. I'll do that once or twice. Usually I put the inner panel back on when the window's down. One thing I did want to show you guys is no matter what, 
walk around the car, go over to the master, and make sure the window runs from the master also. A lot of separate issues, but if you got to get to the wiring, you got the panel off already. Better to know now than later. Yeah. Um, so she runs up and down from the inside door switch and the master window switch. Now that I look at this door panel, I, sh I should have taken one from yesterday, or Saturday at the yard. Uh, my wife's got a vinyl kit to fix this stuff, though. Um, one of those things you used to see on, as a, on TV. Anyway, a uh, couple other things I wanted to point out. Um, make sure your, your door lock switch is through the hole. Um, probably the first thing you should do uh, after feeding this back through. This I always leave dangling. Make sure you hook up your window switch. And most importantly, check the back of the door panel and make sure all your little gray clips that, uh, let's see if I can focus in on that. There it is, are in the spots on the back of the door. Sometimes they break. Um, get them to drop down till they line up. And then just kinda, uh, I like to give the door just a little bit of a, and I seat it and then I kinda work my way around. Um, generally speaking, when one or two is lined up, they kind of all find their home. I've got the two long Phillips right here, and then this. I wanted to show you this. Um, I didn't before. Square hole right there. Little, little plastic tit right there. So I kind of put it in. You can see the, the marks where it used to be on the fabric. And I kind of put it in and I kind of move it around and I'll, I'll, I'll run it back and push it and then run it forward. And now it's locked into that rectangle even without a, a screw holding it. The way you know you're right is you line up with your plastic little dingleberry there for your Phillips head. That holds, that securely holds the door um, handle in place. But right now if I pull on this, you know, it's, it's in there. Um, but I, I'll back it up, drop it into the hole, and pull it forward. And those are usually directional. Hyundai has like three of them. Uh, this guy has one. All right. Um, I'm going to cinch you back up and uh, see where we're at. One more thing, one more little tip I got for you guys. Um, this is a little Craftsman magnetizer. A couple of people make magnetizer, demagnetizers. You'll almost always find it on my number two Phillips head or on the... Phillips head bit that goes in my impact driver they usually just leave it sit on there um, so that my tips are always magnetized um, this uh, this works by just aligning the electrodes um, the electrons inside the piece of uh, 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 steel so basically by sliding it back and forth um, you know you're just aligning the electrons and um, you do that a couple of times and, and everything is good. They give you a demagnetizer which misaligns them, but to misalign them all you have to do with a screwdriver to demagnetize it is bang it on a piece of steel. You misalign the electrons, it's no longer magnetized. That's why you have to magnetize it from time to time. I know this is a shitty shot, but I'm one-handed. But um, basically, basically you just, uh, you know, fucking the magnetizer, all right? And uh, the reason I'm showing you that is because when you when you're getting close to finished on door panels and stuff, you want to be able you want to be able to um, not lose your Phillips heads like down the crack or anything like that. So you want to make sure that they're not going anywhere. Um, otherwise, you may actually have to take the whole damn panel back off. And uh, you know when you're finished and it's 400 degrees in Florida and your 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 your, uh, your taint is about to catch fire, uh, yeah, it's not fun. Anyway, uh, I'll show you the finished product when I'm done, guys. And that's it. Uh, panel's back on. Uh, screws in. These are important because um, these take the brunt of everything put on the door. Um, these are the two most important ones. Matter of fact, the front uh, driver's door was missing the lower one. The screw was there, but the, um, the plastic that it, it goes into was missing. So I took that at the... Uh, 
at the uh, junkyard this weekend, and when I pull that door panel over there again, for whatever reason, I'm going to put it back in because you're constantly pulling on this, and this is where the door panel takes the brunt of your shit. Um, so that's it. That's uh, the rear window regulators. You can, uh, I don't know if you guys saw on the plastic clips, um, I should have did, I did the front driver's side regulator and I should have showed you. I used JB Weld on those. Um, it's fantastic. Uh, it's been on Shrek for as long as I own them on the front window. Um, but basically, the biggest problem is either the regulator goes or those clips fall off the window. And when they do, you clean the window up. I use lacquer thinner. I clean the clips up with lacquer thinner, not too much because they're plastic, and a Dremel, and then I JB weld the shit out of them. Uh, one of the tricks is when the windows are dirty, I use a black permanent marker, and I mark where it was the clip. You know, you can see the dirt mark. Then when you clean the window, um, I do it on both sides, and I clean the inside. I take the mark off, and before I clean the outside, I put a new mark on the inside. Then I clean the outside. It takes the mark off, and when I'm all finished, I... Uh, I clean the marks. This tells you where the plastic clips will go, but that's a whole nother video for a whole nother day. Um, I'll do a small video on the uh, on the uh, door lock actuator on the other side, uh, but uh, for now, Fiona's got all her windows working. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you like, you know, if you like the video, like what I'm doing, subscribe, you know, thumbs up, subscribe, do whatever it is you do. Uh, personally, I don't give a fuck. I don't make any money doing this. So this is for you guys and for me and i like to curse on video so that's me